Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So we're back with the tier list for patch 3.5. Now of course patch 3.5 brought the additions of Kane and Aatrox and you guys will see, in my opinion, I think that both of them are really really strong. And also because in the last video on patch 3.4c, I forgot to include Warwick into the tier list. I'm also going to be adding him into the tier list, so three new champion additions into the tier list. Uh, and yeah. So now, I've noticed a kind of problem lately that uh, S plus tier, as you guys can see here, is very, very oversaturated with champions. So I think that I will be redoing my tier list in the next edition of this tier list video. And I will be trying to limit how many champions are S plus tier. But the issue is, I feel that way too many champions are S plus tier. So I'm going to have to shift a lot of people around, maybe combine like people in A and B tier or something like that, maybe move more people down to D tier or something like that. But yeah, I do agree that there are way too many champions in the S plus tier. Like obviously, Aatrox and Gwen is not equally as strong as Renekton and Jace, although I think that they're both, all four of them are really, really strong. So anyways, let's jump straight into it. First person we're going to discuss is Aatrox. So Aatrox, now in my opinion, Aatrox is really, really strong. However, he is really, really difficult to play because to land your Q sweet spots, especially on Q1 and Q2, is really, really difficult. Q3, surprisingly, is a lot easier because all you gotta do is to dash or flash in range and just smack them down right uh, where your body is, actually. so But landing, especially like Q1, that sweet spot is really, really difficult. And I feel that until people can kind of master Aatrox, Aatrox isn't... Uh, gonna be all that good if you can't land the, your abilities. So now I put Aatrox as pretty much the best champion in the top lane because I believe if you play him properly and you play him well, he is the best champion. Now he has insane damage, insane sustain, and it's pretty much unkillable uh, at a certain point in the game, especially if the enemy team doesn't have Grievous Wounds, which sometimes does actually happen. You do need to get Grievous Wounds against Aatrox, but even with Grievous Wounds on, he still heals an insane amount. Uh, and Aatrox is just super duper strong at the moment. So the rest of the champions in the S plus tier, nothing too much really changed about them. Gwen is still completely uh, OP. Uh, Wukong, Akali, Gragas, Garen, nothing changed about them. But Yone did get a nerf on his W and on his E, which I think are really, really small nerfs. But he did get a... a like indirect buffed as well like where when he exceeds 100% crit chance the crit will be converted into AD now personally I don't necessarily think that you need to buy any crit items past the first two crit items anyways because you would go Bork, um, Solari Charge Blade and IE and then you can start going into like Death's Dance and like Garden Angel already I don't see why you need to buy any other crit item whether be it uh, Bloodthirster or whether be it Lord Dominic's regard. Uh, I don't think you actually need any more crit, but for people who are going that build, technically it is a buff to Yone, so you could say that indirectly Yone got more buffed than nerfed if you do plan on going for crit items. Alright, so in the in the S tier, I've actually moved set up a lot more because I don't quite think Set is in the top top tier of champions, but I do still think he is really really strong and again Sion is still there just because of his split push threat in certain teams if you don't have a, a champion who can deal, deal with him like if you don't have a Riven uh, not a Riven but maybe like a Camille or Fiora maybe even a Riven that can deal with him 1v1 you're gonna have to commit like multiple members to deal with Sion split push you cannot just ignore him if not he can take free in hips free towers and even split push all the way down to taking your base so, the major change for the Baron lane is the fact that I've moved Camille and Fiora down into the A plus tier. Personally, I feel that it's not that they're really weak at the moment, but there are way too many champions who are way, way stronger. And I really don't see them being played all that much in the first place. So, when I do see them, they generally don't make too much of an impact. Although, I will say that if you play Camille and Fiora well... You will still likely do very very well with them, like if you're mechanically good at Fiora and Camille, you can still get solo kills in lane, you can still split push, you can still get towers etc etc. Uh, but at the moment, I just don't think that in general they're as strong as other champions. So, um, another person who I don't, who I think that is a question mark is Shen. Because Shen did get the AoE auto attack now, so he does, he is going to be way better, but at the same time, the problem with Shen is that he is very, very team reliant. So he is a kind of a tank in solo queue. He, he sort of just is there for his huge shield on the ultimate and the taunt as well. And of course, the main thing of what Shen brings to the table is split pushing, forcing someone to respond to him, and then teleporting 
over to his team to make the fight a 5v4 is his main strength. But again, you have to rely on your team. And in solo queue, that doesn't always necessarily work out. So Shen is definitely someone uh, to look out for. Um, he might end up becoming very good. We're not. I'm not too sure at the moment, but we'll have to see. Aside from that, the rest of the Baron Lane tier list remains the same. Okay, so now for the jungle, there's actually a change that I forgot to make, so I'm going to cover that one first, which is Graves. Now, I, I sort of, Graves kind of got lost in the shuffle when I was putting up the tier list. I think Graves is probably going to, I'm not sure if he's S, S+, plus, but I've played a couple of matches on Graves, and I do think he's really strong now because with the um, new face rush and sudden impact, He's actually really, really strong because the Sudden Impact gives him that uh, extra penetration and the Face Rush gives him the, the movement speed to actually catch up with people and with the like uh, ability haste now on Face Rush, you can get your like E up more often, etc. Uh, et and you go for like basically Black Cleaver into 4 crit items including the Lord Dom Dominic's Regard which gives him now 100% crit with the Black Cleaver and pretty much it gives him almost no cooldown on his E so he's dashing non-stop. He is using the face rush to stick onto you, and you literally cannot run away from him. So if you if Graves gets sped, he's pretty much gonna get to you sooner or later. So I do think that Graves is really really strong. I think he's either gonna be bottom of S plus tier or top of uh, S tier, but I do think Graves is really really strong now. So that's just sort of like a, just a minor mistake when I was making the tier list. So Kane, why is he now? Why do I think he's the best jungler now? Well, it's simply because he has the fastest jungle clear in the game. The first time I cleared on Kane, in case you guys didn't know, there is a Kane like sort of clear speed trick where you can Q in, uh, into the wall, uh, but not go over the wall. So you can cancel the animation of your Q and clear even faster. So you can clear your whole red side in about one, at about one minute or one minute and five seconds or, or around that kind of time marker. And the skull crab spawns at one minute twenty five. The first time I cleared on Kane this quickly, I was like. Oh, what do I do now? Because normally you go full red into Scuttle. Uh, so then I had to go like use E, go over to the blue side, and I could still clear like a blue buff. Then I could go to the skull, something like that. So Kane has the fastest clear in the game. Of course, the fact that the jungle, you know, monsters got easier to clear helped him out a lot as well. However, the caveat to Kane being so strong is that blue Kane kind of sucks at the moment, whereas red Kane, aka Rust, is really really strong now because blue Kane is an assassin. What assassins are supposed to do is to one-shot someone, but I have had matches where I play blue cane, I'm 10 and 0, I full combo someone with electrocute, I ult them, I, and I still cannot kill them. I, I come up from my ult, I have to combo them again to actually kill them. Uh, and I don't think that that should be the case. I think that if an assassin is like 10 and 0, you should be one-shotting someone with just one combo. I expect to Q, W, auto, electrocute, and they're dead. I don't expect that I need to ult and then come out and then W and Q again to actually kill them. It makes no sense. He, uh, Shadow Assassin Kane doesn't do nearly enough damage for an assassin. So I don't think Shadow Assassin Kane is good at all. I think Red Kane, aka Rast, is way better because he is really... Uh, kind of, he's basically like a, a fighter. He has a lot of life steal. He is really tanky, and he has uh, AOE CC with his um, W, the AOE knockup. You can knock up multiple people with, and basically, I just think Red Kane is really, really strong. So Kane's fast jungle clear speed basically means he should be up in levels and goal on the enemy jungler most of the time. And then uh, getting uh, Red Kane um, by obviously having to gank the melee, the melee champ. So generally, you're gonna have to spam, spam gank like top lane. Maybe the enemy tank support, or maybe mid lane if the person is melee, like Katarina or Akali. And you're gonna be golden, basically. So the 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 uh, other S plus tier champions, Lee Sin is still obviously completely broken if you can play him well. Shivana, Wukong still really really strong. Same goes for Kha'Zix. Now I've actually moved Yone up into the S plus tier because I really think Yone as a champion is just so. Uh, broken at the moment. I think Yone in the jungle is also really, really strong. And yeah, he's just way too strong of a champion at the moment. It's a common trend that when champions are too strong but they're not meant to be junglers, they're going to be like top tier in the jungle as well. And that's the case for not only Yone but Aatrox as well. So Aatrox has a pretty good jungle to clear. His Q, the, all three parts of his Q is AoE, so he can, he can clear AoE camps really uh, quickly. His clear speed is pretty, pretty decent. And of course, as I mentioned in the Baron Lane tier list, as a champion, he has, he has, he's way too tanky, does, has too much sustain, does too much damage, and he's just super overtuned at the moment, which is why he's also S plus tier in the jungle. 
Now, Warwick, as you guys can see, is in the S tier. Now, why is he like only in the S tier? He's not S plus or something, despite him being a new champion. Now, in my opinion, Warwick has he is really good in a sense that he does decent damage while being decently tanky, and he also does mixed damage. However, he has a couple of problems. The main the main issue I have with Warwick is that he cannot solo carry a game. Even when you get extremely fed, like let's say you start the game off like 6 and 0, you cannot carry the game because you don't do nearly enough damage and you really need your team to help you out. He's sort of like a supportive jungler that still does decent amounts of damage. So he's mainly really there to like just lock down people and provide CC. So you, you mainly initiate with your ultimate. You let your team kill whoever you ult it and then you try to absorb damage using your E damage reduction. Try to fear enemies like toward your team for them to kill, uh, etc. And basically you just kind of just do that and you cannot like carry on your own. Like if your team is all feeding, you can't carry. Like a, a lot of the S tier, uh, S plus tier champions, if your team is feeding, you could solo carry the game conceivably. Like if you get really farmed and really fed as like a Kane, you could solo carry the game. If you get farmed and fed as a Shivana, Aatrox, Yone, Kha'Zix, you can solo carry the game. Lee Sin, you shouldn't actually let your team feed anyway because you should be ganking a lot early and getting them a hit in the first place. Uh, and getting yourself a hit in the first place, so you sh your team shouldn't be like all four lanes losing in the first place. So that that's what the S plus tier champions can do, but Warwick simply cannot do that, so he cannot really be in the S plus tier in my opinion. And yeah, so the, the other three people in the S tier after Warwick is the three ganking junglers. If they are really aggressive and gank non-stop, it, it's really, you know, a pain in the butt to like laners, especially those with no mobility, especially pe to people like me who play ADC. Like when they gank you once and you flash, and then they come and gank you again, you have no flash. It's pretty much like guaranteed. So you do need people who know how to pilot those champions and track flashes uh, to like repeat gank and like, you know, get kills and get themselves and their team a hit. So uh, Morgana, I've moved down all the way from S plus to A plus because Morgana's main strength is how fast she clears the jungle because of double camping. Now the issue is that they reduce the range of the camp. So she can no longer do Raptors and Red at the same time. She can no longer do Blue and Grum at the same time. So she now has, I wouldn't say mediocre, but she doesn't have insane jungle clear speeds anymore. She cannot compete with Kane. So Kane is the new uh, clear speed king. Uh, completely dethroned Morgana as the clear speed queen. So Morgana doesn't have that strength anymore. So now she just becomes like a normal uh, jungle uh, doesn't her clear speed doesn't really stand out? So she's just kind of supportive with the black shield, with the with the bindings. Uh, you know she she's decent, but she's just not like really really good uh, anymore. And pretty much the rest of the tier list remains the same. A tier has a lot of ch uh, champions who are good, but uh, just have horrible clear speeds. Champions like Gwen and Camille, uh, Trindomir and uh, Jax as well. Uh, of course, the jungle being easier to clear did help them significantly, but still, their clear speeds are pretty lackluster. So, all that out of the way, we're going to move on to the mid lane. Alright, so as you guys can see, there's way too many champions who are good in the mid lane. Again, I'm going to rework the tier list in my next edition. But, uh, so just something I'd like to point out is that the addition of the, not really addition, but the sort of reworked Awakened Soul Stealer is going to be great for a lot of these champions. So, uh, of course, it gives you um, a cooldown on your basic abilities when you get a kill. So for champions with ultimate resets, it's going to be really, really useful. So champions like Vex and Ari, for example, they get reset on kill on their ultimate. When they get their basic abilities reduced, they can get another full combo of their basic abilities again. And then, uh, of course, they did get the alt reset, so they can reset everything, basically. So they sort of become a, a kind of a pseudo Katarina passive where they get resets on their basic abilities as well, but not full resets, but it's a partial cooldown reset. So... That makes them even stronger. Of course, again, Akali is still completely broken. Same goes for Yone, Vex as well. Kassadin is uh, is still really, really strong as well. Uh, again, also Katarina. Basically, the whole S plus tier is all really, really strong. Definitely going to move a couple of people down and rework the tier list in the next edition. But yeah, for now, all the S plus tier champions completely broken. Not, not completely broken. That's a bit of over-exaggeration. But they're just really, really strong. And... Uh, S tier is just a step below the S plus tier. Many of them are still incredibly strong. Champions like Ziggs, Galio, and Orianna, for example, are still all incredibly strong. But S plus tier is way too congested. We cannot put so many champions in there. And 
uh, pretty much the rest of the tier list remains the same, but just small minor details to note is uh, that Lux did get, of course, her AP build kind of nerfed a little bit, so Lux is going to be a little bit weaker in the mid lane, but I still think Lux, you know, is really strong just because of her shield. It's not really her damage, but it's mainly her shield, which of course does scale less with AP now, and, you know, sort of has more base amount to sort of encourage the support Lux uh, in the support role and with the support build. But I still think mid lane Lux with damage build is going to work just fine, especially with the addition of the Horizon Focus, which champions like Lux and Seraphine are going to benefit pretty greatly from. And yeah, so that is pretty much it for mid lane. Now we're going to talk about the ADCs. Okay, so the ADCs, obviously the major change here is that Runan, not Runan, what am I talking about? Uh, Lord Dominic's Regard got added to the game, so this allows a lot of ADCs to get 100% crit. Now regardless of that, I still think Kai'Sa and Lucian are the two best ADCs at the moment. Uh, probably if I were to create like an S exclusive S plus tier, it probably would be Lucian and Kai'Sa, and then probably S tier would be the other four champions in the, the S plus tier at the moment. But Zaya is still really strong and uh, really safe as well. I think one of the most underrated ADCs, and I, I don't think I don't see a lot of people playing Zaya, but I think she's really really strong. Caitlyn also with the with the hundred percent crit uh, is gonna be really really strong. Ezreal, uh, Ezreal video you guys just saw how strong he is, and that was even before the buff. So now with the buff on Q, he's gonna be even better. And Corky is pretty much just there when you, your team needs AP. You wouldn't pick Corky if your team already has a mage or AP damage source. But after they buff like Corky's Gatling Gun to the Moon, he is really, really strong. Now, Vayne, I have actually moved down from S+. Why have I done that? Basically, it's because I think Vayne is still really strong. I think she's still a very, very strong carry. But uh, first up, I think she's a little bit situational where, you, where she is mainly good into tanky teams. And number two, uh, she doesn't match up really well against S plus tier champions. Now her best matchup in the S plus tier is going to be Kai'Sa because you can proc your silver bolts, silver bolts, bolts before Kai'Sa can proc her uh, actual uh, passive because Kai'Sa's passive needs f uh, 5 hits whereas Vayne's needs 3. Uh, against Lucian, you lose because Lucian does way too much early game damage. Against Zaya and Caitlyn, you lose because they have too long range. Against Ezreal, you lose in the early game because he's going to poke you down. Against Corky, same deal as Ezreal, he's going to poke you down. So she has pretty bad matchups against all of the S plus tier champions except Kai'Sa. And because of that, I think she got to go down a step because uh, she's going to suffer uh, in the laning phase. Possibly get pushed in, dived, and just get killed. So not too good at the moment. Now, Kais, not Kaisa, uh, Tristana, Varus, and Samira are all still really strong, especially, you know, again with uh, LDR on Tris as well as Samira. Uh, Draven as well, really strong. Um, I'm going to try to create videos for a lot of these ADCs uh, when I can. But yeah, I think Jinx is a step down from the S tier champions. The Runan's buff definitely did help her, but uh, she really... It uh, doesn't have mobility, way too squishy, and can't really stay safe, which is the main issue. And the you know the last two tiers of ADCs are those that you don't really want to pick majority of the time. And yeah, that's pretty much it for ADCs. Now we can talk about supports. Right, so honestly, barely any changes to support. Karma hasn't been touched these two patches, so she is still the best support. I think Nami and Lulu are close behind. Uh, we still, of course, have really strong... Um, Engagers, Nautilus, uh, Rakan, and I still think Pike is really strong. Same goes for like Lux. Now Lux, you do have a choice between damage build as well as the support build now because especially since they're trying to veer her more to its support, but she also has the new Horizon Focus item, so that could be really good in her damage build as well. Um, I've actually moved uh, Seraphine up from A to A+, plus because I think Seraphine building AP with Horizon Focus could be really strong. I think Seraphine AP built in support role is better than actually building full support because you get, you know, better shields and heals with more AP anyways, and you can deal, you know, a decent damage when you combo someone. So I do think uh, Seraphine with AP is better. And pretty much the rest of the support tier list pretty much just remains the same because honestly, not too much has actually changed in the support role. The main thing that changed is... Uh, really, the jungle role, uh, jungle had huge changes, which is why we explained jungle and the jungle champions for so long. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye.